Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Just to talk about some of the things that are occurring in the world at the moment, just for a few minutes, just to give clarity and a lot of things that we are experiencing. I just want to challenge the church not to get caught up in gossip. Bump your neighbor, say, stay away from gossip. When you are dealing with conflicts and war and you're dealing with politics, the number one thing about war is one of the, the main strategy is disinformation and creating rumors. A lot of the stuff that you see is not verified. And especially when using social media, with the news, there's got to be certain things they do that's got to be verified. But on social media, what you read there doesn't have to be verified. Are, are you hearing me here today? So you can have false videos, you can have lies, you can have dramas. So you gotta make sure that you are not caught up in disinformation. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. Okay, so don't, don't now you're taking a break from watching the Kardashians because you don't have a life. Amen, and now you're caught up in Israel and Hamas, you understand. Now that's your next saga. Okay, don't get caught up, it's not a saga. There's real things happening in the world. And don't get talking and talking about stuff and you're not involved, you've got nothing there, you've got no knowledge and your knowledge is from Twitter or from somebody that says something on the news. Are, are you hearing me? Here? The end of the day, we need to pray. What do we need to do? Pray. We need to pray. War is, war is uh, uh, the consequences of, of war are dramatic. We've got kids that are dying in their hundreds every single day, that's what happens. And the thing, the thing that we see is the vastness of the hatred of people because violence begets violence. So when you get somebody and you, when your own child has been killed, it changes you on the inside. Are you hearing me? And if you don't have God on your side, you're gonna retaliate. And it's like, well, you killed one, I'm gonna kill two. You understand? Or I'm going to kill 10. Well, you kill 10, I'm going to kill 20. Or ah, you kill 20, I'm going to kill 100. At the end of the day, violence begets violence. Are you hearing me here today? So it doesn't matter where you are. So never be an instigator of violence and an instigator of war. Bump your neighbor and say, stop it. Stop. Are you hearing me? Don't get caught up in that thing. Because what you sow, you will reap. You sow violence by your ignorance in the statements that you make and the things you say, you will reap it in your own family. Listen to what I'm saying. You become part of the mob and you want mob justice, it won't be too long and you will experience mob justice in your own family, you'll experience it in your own home. So don't play these games. The devil comes to steal, kill and to destroy. And he's the biggest con artist in the world. And at the end of the day, he's driving all these things behind the scenes. And what happens is the one begets violence, begets violence, begets violence, and we end up in wars. And now you've got big men with big machines and big destructive stuff. But all the, at the end of the day, it's human beings, it's people that are making these decisions. Are you hearing me? So don't get caught up in a side. Don't get caught up in politics. I've got friends, I've got Palestinian colleagues that are suffering, going through situations. I've got Israeli colleagues and friends. Are you hearing me? And when I speak to these people, none of them are pushing war. Yeah. At the end of the day, none of them are pushing for the destruction of the other side. Not one of them. So don't fall into that thing. What is the problem? Pastor, please. Our kids are being called up into the army. My daughter is being conscripted. My son is being conscripted. Please pray with us. Pastor, please, my, my kids are called up into the army. Now our kids have to go fight a war that nobody wants to fight. We've got to do violence and you're forced to do violence. Are you hearing me? People that are innocent, that don't want to be part of it? No, they are blockading these people. The Palestinians are block blockading the people. The Israelis are calling the people. We have people that are called up by their governments that don't have a right or say over themselves. We're talking about the ordinary citizens. So then let's get caught up in politics. And we have our own politicians ranting off their mouths, saying their things, putting aside at the end of the day. No, what we need is peace. 
And the Bible says we need to pay, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Can I get a big amen there? Yes. It's scripture. It's scripture. Now what happens? You make a blanket thing. There's no blanket. There's context for everything. You don't have a proper real understanding of what's taking place unless you're there and unless you are involved. But one thing we do know is violence begets violence. Somewhere there's got to be forgiveness. Somebody, somewhere there, violence has to cease. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. Are you hearing me? So I'm not going to get up into the antics if you want to really talk and stuff because I know what's going to do. If whatever I say, whoever side you're on, you're going to take a sound bite of the thing that, that you believe I'm saying. You take the one sound bite and you don't balance it with everything else I say. And then you say, Pastor Bert says this, if it's your thing, and you think I'm on the other side, Pastor Bert says this, and you take it off on an agenda, and I'm not getting part of that. The Bible says we need to pray. Are you hearing me? So once again, understanding. There's a lot of understanding that I can give you. And maybe in time to come, if I don't have the time today, maybe in the time I'll give you a lot more understanding. But it is not as cut and dry as you hear and as our politicians are speaking or the media is speaking. It is not a black and a white situation. Everything has got context. Say with me, context. And the thing is, how far back do you go to say, to play the blaming game? How far back do you go? Otherwise in South Africa, how would we get along? How far do we go back to talk about the way we hurt one another? Somewhere we've got to say, okay, the past is finished. Are you hearing me? Somewhere we've got to go forward. Somewhere. Are you hearing me? And by that I don't mean we don't address the past and we don't, we don't put the past under the rug. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, if it's somewhere there's got to be reconciliation. Somewhere there's got to be love. Can I get a big amen there? And somebody we've got to take, go forward and say, this is what we need to do to go forward so we can make it. So I want to challenge uh, our leaders that are watching, our politicians that are connected, and say, come on, let's fix our backyard. Let's get this. There's, there's the, the same amount of violence in these wars we're experiencing on a daily basis in our own country. Let's fix our own country. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the, the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. We pray, Lord, for a peace in the Middle East. I pray for Israel. I pray for Palestine. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for Russia. Lord, we pray that all over the world where there's conflicts we don't even know about, where there's more people dying from what we see in the news, Lord, I pray, help us. Lord, do a supernatural work. We know behind all of these things, there's a bigger picture. We know behind all of these things, what is taking place. And Lord, I pray, give us supernatural wisdom in how we need to handle this. Yes, Lord. Give us supernatural wisdom, Lord, that you will be glorified in everything we are and do. You know all. I pray for peace in the Middle East. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I thank you, Lord, that you've got Israel in your hands. You've got Palestine in your hands. You've got the world in your hands. Our lives in your hands. And Lord, I pray do a supernatural miracle in the life of those leaders so that we don't see the destruction that we're experiencing every day is our prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, amen, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Does this help you? Yes. Amen. Right. Today I want to speak about freedom. John 8 verse 36 it says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be? If the Son makes you free, you shall be? Free indeed. Who's the Son? Jesus. If Jesus sets you free, you are? Free indeed. Say with me, I am free because of Jesus. I am free. Now Galatians 5 verse 1 says the following. It says, stand fast therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made us free. So what's he saying? Stand fast in your freedom. Are you free? Yes. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. Now he says, now that you are free, what must you do? 
Stand fast in that liberty. Which means what? You can lose your freedom. Bump your neighbor and say, don't lose your freedom. Bump your neighbor again. I said, said I, I told you, don't lose your freedom. Seriously. Don't lose your freedom. So you've got to stand fast in your liberty. And that's what I'm trying to help you with, with the way we think. Don't get entangled up in the nuances of men and the, 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 the opinions of men. No, no matter how intellectual they sound, just because they use big words doesn't mean they have wisdom. Are you hearing me, Yatu? So listen to your grandma. Bump your neighbor, say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. She might not have a degree like you have, but she's got some wisdom. Can I get a big amen there? So yeah. stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. The Bible says, and do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Don't get caught up in that yoke. Don't get caught up in the sin. You've been set free from sin. So don't be like the world. Don't be like everybody. Don't think you have to talk about things. When they bring up things and they're all talking about it, what you do is you say, hey, you're not there. You don't know. I know the one who does know. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. And you pray. Hallelujah. It's very simple. And next time you come in, they won't talk again. They won't talk because they're talking nonsense. They're talking rubbish. Are you hearing me? Because who knows? At the end of the day, who knows? In South Africa, we need a supernatural miracle to bring about the change and transformation. Who really knows? There's nobody who really knows. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need supernatural intervention within our nation. There's not one man who says, I know how to fix South Africa. There isn't. We need Jesus. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. So therefore, stand in the liberty. Stand in the freedom that you have. Proverbs 22, verse 7. And I'm going to deal today with one of the elements that you can fall into. And it's one of the biggest entrapments that I've found that the devil entraps a Christian. It says in Proverbs 22 verse 7, he says, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is the servant to the lender. Another translation says, the borrower is the slave to the lender. Bump your neighbor, say, are you a slave? <laughs> the rich rules over the poor the borrower is a slave to the lender. See, here, here's one hard fact. The poor have been marketed to and sweet-talked and pressured into giving their income to the bankers and to the investment gurus. And challenged to take out long-term loans. Say that me, long-term. Loans. With compound interest. Compound interest is interest on interest. So now it's not just interest on your money, it's interest on the interest on your money. That's where bankers make their money, on compound interest. That is what you pay when you have long-term debt. You're paying interest on your interest. And in effect, you become slaves to the money lenders. So you are enslaved to the people that you owe money to. Bump your neighbor and say, are oh, you a slave like me? <laughs> huh? So, well, at least we're all slaves together, right? Huh? You're my BFF slave. My best friend for life slave. And you're a slave, I'm a slave. Everybody a slave slave. Hallelujah. So the question is, who owns you? Now, there is a responsibility 
from the lender and there is a responsibility to the borrower. And I'm going to speak about debt in a few while, but I just want to just mention that the lender also has a responsibility, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the money lender. Deuteronomy 15 and verse 1. It says, at the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debts. Say with me, release of debts. Release of debts. When? Seven years. Okay, so who still owes you money? After seven years, the Bible says you need to release them. Verse 2 says, and this is the form of the release. This is how it looks like. Every creditor who has lent anything, say with me, anything. anything. Lawn mower, <laughs> car. Are you hearing me? If you have lent anything to his neighbor, the Bible says, shall release it. He shall not require it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. What's it called? Can't hear you. What's it called? So your cousin that owes you that 50 rand from 1994 or 97. What does the Bible say? The Lord's. What does the Bible say? Lord's release. You want the blessing of God upon your life. What do you need to do? You need to forgive the debt. You need to release the dead. Deuteronomy 15 and verse 12 says, If your brother, a Hebrew man or woman, a Jewish man or woman, is sold to you and serves you six years, the Bible says, then in the seventh year, you shall let him go free from you. In actual fact, in the next verse, it explains that you don't just let them go free. You've got to give them money to set them up. You've got to give of your flocks and so that they can. Are you, are you hearing me here today? So that is a responsibility that we have. So once again, because after six years, the creditors were commanded to cancel their debt free their slaves, this was intended to ensure that the lenders make no more than six-year loans. So in those times you never did a six year because the law was you're not allowed at in the seventh year you have to release people from their debt see so there was protections from enslaving people that's why you're trying to understand why Jewish people are wealthy and Muslim people also apply the same principles they have because it comes from the same comes from the same commands because they also believe in Abraham. So so when we talk about these things and we understand these things, it says here that the lender shall know more than six loans. Why? Because they understand the magic of compound interest because that's how you you become wealthy of the, what can I say? Of the misery of somebody else. That's why in South Africa, South Africa's banks are of the most profitable banks in the world. So when looking at this, there is a responsibility from governance to make sure that there is a system where people can be protected and released. Can I get a big amen there? So now obviously, these are laws. Now you don't have to What can I say? You don't have to subject yourselves to the law in that sense, but you can make a law for yourself. And within your own community and your own family, apply these principles within your life. And that's why Nehemiah and Jeremiah, they confronted the wealthy in Israel because they enslaved the poor by extending loans and would not release them according to the law of Moses. You can go read this in Nehemiah 5, verse 1 to 12. I don't have time to read through it. You can write that down. Nehemiah 5, verse 1 to 12. Go read it at home. And Jeremiah 
34, verse 13 to 17. Write that down. Jeremiah 34, verse 13 to 17. Go read that at home. So otherwise you become a slave. And then it eventually spirals down to a financial, a financial collapse as we see in Isaiah 24, verse 1 to 6. So when it comes to lending money, it's never, ever good. So when you hear like our country getting all this money, it's money we don't have. It's not good. Are you hearing me here? When we are borrowing money, so the Lord has to help us. Romans 13 verse 8 says, Owe no one anything except to love one another. Can I get a big amen? amen. And that's why Jeremiah, uh, Galatians 5 verse 1, we need to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which we have Christ has made us free and not getting tangled up because it's easy to slip into bondage, both spiritual and economically. And even though apartheid was abolished in 1994, the history has shown, has shown us that the rich and the powerful will always devise a way to bring the poor back into slavery by controlling the flow of money from rich to poor. You control the flow of money, now you're talking interest and you're talking interest upon interest. Therefore, we need to come to that place where we're done with debt. Bump your neighbor and say, I'm done with being a slave. I'm done. <laughs> done, done, done. Are you hearing me? Because what we're doing, we're enriching others. We're making other people rich. As we borrow on long term, what happens is there's interest, but now there's compound interest. Now you're not just paying interest on your money, you're paying interest on your your interest. So therefore, we have to make sure that we are disciplined within our own finances. Amen. And that when people wave and they wave and they give you an out, it is not an out. It's a prison cell. A credit card is a prison cell. If you can't pay your credit card or full at the end of the month, you shouldn't have a credit card. Because what are you doing? You're making someone else rich. Bump your neighbor and say, so what's your purpose? And tell your neighbor, like me, it's to make other people rich. Hello. We make other people rich. No, no, no. We need to get out of it. Debt causes damage, stress, anxiety, marriage problems. Are you hearing me here today? And therefore, we need to break that cycle over our lives in the name of Jesus. Can I get a big amen? amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on. The Lord wants you to be prosper. He has set you free, but He has not set you free so that you can be entangled in debt where you are controlled by somebody else because you have contracted your life through your signature to them because at a time you felt you couldn't, you didn't have, but you didn't allow God to come through for you. Are you hearing me here? So therefore, we have to deal with our money. And I just want to give you a few fi a, a, a principles on financial freedom. Godly principles on financial freedom. We need to be faithful. God wants us to have spiritual maturity, but spiritual maturity shows in how we handle our finances. Are you hearing me? Who wants to be free? Give a wave. You want to be free, yeah. right? Okay, well, then we've got to take responsibility and do things right. Come on. Quick five points. Number one, and you've heard me say this to you, and I'm saying it to you again. Number one, keep good records. You must account. Proverbs 27 verse 23 says, Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. You've got to keep track of your finances. You've got to get know what's going on. You don't put your head in the sand and you just take it as the day at a time. No. How much did you come? Well, I'm living from hand to mouth. 
But the question is, how much money did you actually get in? Well, as it comes in, I give it out and I pay. No, no. Because if you know how much you actually get in, you can actually make decisions. Well, I'm giving you, I give you, but you add it all up, you think, wow, I'm actually earning six, seven, eight grand. You understand? Which means if you got that amount of money, you can plan. Are you hearing me? So you've got to know, you've got to understand, you've got to do accounting. So Proverbs 23 verse 23 says, buy the truth and do not sell it. Wisdom and instruction and understanding. In other words, put in effort to know what's going on. You've got to know what you own, what you owe, what you earn, and where it goes. You've got to know what you own. What, what do you own? What's yours? Write it down. Lawn mower. One pair of jeans. Because you say, wow, those jeans, I must get them. What about the five that are in your cupboard? Okay, you guys got that? So what you own, what you owe, what you earn, and where does it go? Right? Say what you own, what you owe, what you earn, and where it goes. I have found through counseling what we've done in many, many marriages, one of the biggest issues when it comes to marriages is one of the, one of the spouses are in the dark. The Bible says, listen to me, it says two is better than, than one. So if God has made you a team, be a team. And if one of you don't like accountability, something's wrong in the marriage anyway. If one of you are lazy and you don't want to know and say, well, they just, he just handles everything or she just handles everything, get, you're gonna, you are going to reap the fruit of not knowing. Ladies, you better know what's going on in your uh, husband's finances. Where's the money going? Because it takes money to sin. Bump your neighbor, say, follow the money. <laughs> if you see there was a payment made for perfume and you didn't get it, you've got to ask a question. <laughs> now what's going on in your wife's finances? And listen, yeah, when you come and say, this is mine, this is yours, the biggest problems I find in marriages is when you think it's my money and your money. There is no such thing as my money and your money in marriage. I don't know why I'm getting into this. It feels like there's maybe one or two people here that need that. Oh, there's big amens coming through here, right? Amen. Okay, you're watching me. You're getting this? Don't come with that stuff. Okay. And the first thing I ask, when I do the, count, when I do the counseling, when the, when the pawpaws hit the fan and they come, the first thing I know, do you know what's going on in the finances? Do you know what's going on in the finances? Then I said, okay, then I can't fix stupid. <laughs> can't fix it. And if there's secrecy in husband or wife, already something's wrong with the marriage. Then my question is, are you married? There's no secrecy. There's no secrecy. I didn't speak about this in the first service, so 
So there's got to be, bump your neighbors. This is this for you. <laughs> Some marriage counseling. Hallelujah. Amen. No, no, you need to know what's going on. That's how you help one another. You keep one another accountable. You understand? You can't just go and spend your, I must have those shoes. No, you must nothing. Tell your neighbor, you must nothing. Okay. You decide together, and when you have context together of what are the implications, then you understand the implications of buying the shoes when you don't have money or going to play a, a, a game of golf and you can't pay your kids' school fees. But now you must, you must, because maybe you could get business. That's rubbish. You, to bump your neighbor, you must nothing. You must nothing. I must have those clubs. Bump your neighbor, you must nothing. Must nothing. <laughs> Is this helping you? Yes. Number two, plan your spending. Budget. Proverbs 21.5, the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. No impulse buying. Freedom is not determined by how much you make, it's determined by how much you spend. You don't need to make more, you need to spend less. While I must have this sale, no, no, no. While I save 500, no. You've got to pay 500 to save the 500. You don't save nothing. So anybody who comes and says, you must now, oh, you must get into this scheme. You've got to do it now. You've got to do it now before tonight. If you don't, oh, you've got to phone me back. That's, that's a devil lie. It's called marketing. There's nothing you need to get now. And if God wants you to have it, if it costs 4,000 and you can get it for 500, you know what, if God wants you to have it, then you'll be able to pay 4,000 for it. Uh, are you hearing me? Well, next year, well, then it's gonna cost 4,000. Well, then the Lord will make sure I have the 4,000 to be able to pay it. Then if I pay 4,000, who cares? Then I pay 4,000. See, the, there's, there isn't value in money. You get taught this at university. Are you hearing me? So once again, it's got to do with what and demand? Supply and demand. That's what it is. You understand? Don't get caught up in that rat race. Don't be part of that. Say with me, I'm not a slave. Bump your neighbor and say, don't make me your slave. Goodness gracious. Tell your neighbor, I'll buy when I want to, when I can. Amen. Amen. Number three, save for the future. Proverbs 21 verse 20 says, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they have. Bible also warns against get rich get quick schemes. Proverbs 13 verse 11 in the New Living Translation, it says, wealth from get rich schemes. Get rich quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Say with me, hard work. Hard work. So if you if you're pushing for this quick rich, if that's your mentality, even if you're in church and you got that quick rich mentality, God doesn't care about the money. He cares more about your character. He cares more that you don't go to hell. Rather be poor and not go to hell. Are you hearing me here today? So once again, it's not, it's about character development. It's not about money. So don't get into quick reach, I must, or it's about money. No. What are you doing to bring about change and transformation to make the society a better society? And I don't have time, but when I deal with our business people and stuff like that, the first thing I teach business people is to not make money. If your purpose is to make money, you're a slave. Money is the tool. Money is the flow. It's what are you doing to transform the culture? You attend to the needs of society. Can I get a big amen there? 
That's what we do. Okay, but that's for another time. I'll do a, I'll do a, a seminar next year. How's that sound? Number four, return the tithe back to the Lord. Bump your neighbor, say, don't steal God's money. Okay, that's stupid. Because everything you have is from God. All your, the fact that you can breathe, that should be 10% by itself. Can I get a big amen there? Okay, let's start there. So we give that which belongs to the Lord. That's why all of us contribute to a community here together to be able to empower and help them, and help the poor and be a blessing to others. So give that which belongs to the Lord. When we give back that which belongs to the Lord, it shows an act of gratitude yes. because everything we have comes from the Lord. It shows our priority because it's God first. That means God first. God okay, and it's an act of faith because we believe in tomorrow that tomorrow God will take care of me. So we give it to the Lord first. Proverbs 3 verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits, not the leftovers, the first fruits of all your increase. Verse 10, So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Shout it out with me. Say, Overflow! overflow. Come on, with some faith. Say, be overflow. overflow! Okay, give that which belongs to the Lord. Then number five, and lastly, enjoy what you have. Be content with what you have. So rather than being sad about what you don't have, enjoy what you have. Instead of complaining and looking at the Joneses and say, but I want, I want, I want the, why can't I? No, no, enjoy what you have. Don't go on vacation with somebody else's money. Just because it says it's available in your credit card, hey, it's available, but it's not yours. And especially in this festive season where we come and you say, oh, you know what? Oh, I deserve, we deserve it. We work so hard this year. You know, we deserve a break. Are you hearing me? You deserve. And then what happens? Then you deserve. You have your little thing in December and then you come back January and now you have to work double as hard to next November. Then you come again and say, oh, I work so hard. No, you work so hard because of last December. No, you, you, you've got to say to yourself, I forgot. I forgot. You're working that hard. Why? You're in debt. You're working that hard. Why? It's hard labor. Why? Because you're owned. You're a slave. Bump your neighbor and say, are you a slave like me? <laughs> no, no, we're going to break that. Enjoy what you have. You don't have money to go away. Don't go away on somebody else's money. Get everything together. Then you pray and say, Lord, help us. We want to conquer this thing in Jesus' name. Yeah. Cut up all your credit cards. Cut up all your, 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 um, your whatever cards you have. Cut those things up. Cut it up. You should never buy furniture on debt, ever. Say this after me. Say with me, stupid people. Buy furniture on debt. Say with me, stupid people. Buy clothes on debt. That's why the card there, it says, thank you. Because you're paying for somebody's jet. You're paying for their fuel. And they're very thankful. That's why they say, thank you very, very much. Why? You're making them rich. And every time you see a jet go over, just look at that jet and say, you're welcome. <laughs> as they're going overseas to go on an overseas ski holiday, as they're flying to Switzerland, just tell them, you're welcome. <laughs> Hello? Because yeah. they did say thank you. Yeah. If you don't have chairs, you don't have chairs. You put cushions. Are you hearing me? Now there's good debt and bad debt and I'm not going to get into those things now. You know, buying a house. There's investments and there's things. I don't have time for that today. But the thing is, don't do the bad debt. Credit card, if you can't pay it off, cut that thing up now. 
cut it up. Any card you have, cut it up. Take your debt, consolidate it, and now the faith comes in. Now you pray and say, Lord, we repent. We have enslaved ourselves. We have been entangled. I must have, I must have, Lord, please forgive us. And now you work it out. You work it out. And the Lord will give you the money to pay off that debt so that you can be free. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Just stay where you are. Time is up. The order of God's blessing, shout it out with me. Say, earn it, tithe it, save it, repay it, enjoy it. Say it with me again. Earn it, tithe it, save it, repay it, enjoy it. Lift up your hands. Let me pray with you. Lord, I thank you for breakthrough today. We repent, Lord, where we have entangled ourselves for instant gratification. Forgive us, Lord, where we've enslaved ourselves through ill discipline. Where we have bought stuff we don't need. We have bought stuff we can't afford. Please forgive us, Lord. But Lord, help us. As we make a decision to get out of debt, we don't want to be entangled by the world. I thank you, Lord, as we bring our stuff, we are faithful in what you give us. Thank you, Lord, that you will set us free so that by this time next year, Lord, we can look back and say, look what the Lord has done. Lord, it is your will that we prosper and be in good health as our soul prospers. And that's why I thank you, Lord, that you provide. We'll never be wanting because you're our shepherd. I shall not want, your word says. And Lord, we know you're our shepherd, that as Christians, you supply, you lead us, you guide us. And I thank you, Lord, that each and every person here will see the supernatural power and miracle working power of God in their finances. I speak it over you in Jesus' name. Receive it. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe there's somebody here you have not yet given your life to Jesus. I want to give you that opportunity today to come to Him. God wants to set you free. God wants to give you breakthrough in your life. But for that to happen, you have to invite Him into your life. Coming to church doesn't make you Christian. Calling yourself Christian doesn't mean you're Christian. The Bible says you must be born again. Must be born again. God comes, takes out that old nature, places His Spirit within you, transforms you from the inside out. But you've got to acknowledge, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you in my life. I'm done with this old life. I'm inviting you in. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed, is that you, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. If you've done it before, never done it before, you backslidden, whatever, just quickly slip up your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I see those hands. See those hands all over. Thank you. You can put them down. Thank you very much. I want to ask one more time. Jesus says, today is the day of salvation. Today. There's people that woke up this morning that will not see the end of this day. Today is the day of salvation. Is your life right with God? Is your life right with God? If I want to ask one more time. Maybe you've been challenged on the inside. But God is speaking to you right now. I want to ask one more time. If you never raised your hand, you want to do it. Quickly slip it out. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hands going up all over. You can put your hands down. Now I want to pray with you. Now I wonder if you can do one more thing. If you raise your hand, grab your belongings. Quickly come out in the aisles. Quickly come stand here in front of me. If you raise your hand, come on. There is power yes. in the blood of come on. Jesus. Yes. Come on. Come as you are.
enough. Close your eyes, say these words with me. Dear Jesus, I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. Everything that I am, I give to you. My whole life, I surrender unto you. Thank you, Lord. I trust you. I trust your word. It says, it's as I receive you and believe, I have the right to be called the child of God. Thank you, Lord. Every power of the devil broken over their lives. And as from now, they belong to you in Jesus' name. Give them a hand of praise. Come on. You now belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 086-111-2345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.